certainly. I think that one of the most pressing issues or one of the most sensationalized topics at this moment is the issue of Donald Sterling, the L.A. Clippers owner. The NBA announced today that he would be banned from the league for life. And unfortunately, so many black people, as they did with the election of President Obama, um, misinterpreted that particular set of events as being indicative of some type of racial justice. Nothing could be further from the truth. Let us keep in mind that Sterling is a European Jew, and all of the news stations are controlled by European Jews, and 99% of the print media is also controlled by European Jews. So the question becomes, why would rich and powerful European Jews allow one of their own to be outed on their networks and in their newspapers? This was unprecedented and had nothing to do with racial justice. The reason Sterling was exposed and outed is because he is a hillbilly Jew. And what I mean by that is he doesn't like to do what he's told by the ruling Jewish elite. So when white people talk about playing the race card, that is exactly what they did to chastise and punish and castigate one of their own. This was not about racial justice. This was not about white supremacy. This was not about discrimination in professional sports. This was about very well organized and high placed European Jews using the race card as a way to expose and remove one of them who refused to play by the rules. If Sterling was a part of the in group, you would have never heard about that tape. In fact, the girlfriend who taped it, if she taped it, because there's no proof she did the taping. She may have lost her life. That's the way European Jews play. So this was not about some tape that got discovered and got leaked to the media because Jews run the media. This was about them taking this information and using it as a quote-unquote blackmail against him and removing him from the league for not doing what the hell they told him to do. Every once in a while, white supremacy does its own internal cleansing. And it's, earned, and it's own internal policing to keep white folks in line with what the dominant program is. And that's exactly what happened with Sterling. This was not about racial justice. And also, I think it's important to note that the way in which it was handled and the delay in which the NBA took in pronouncing its decree as far as how they were going to deal with him, okay, was longer than what normally would happen had the same type of statements been made about members of the LBGD community or about Jews or white folks. Had he been a black owner saying things about white people, there would have been no week. They wouldn't have waited till another NBA game passed away. Okay, he would have been fired on the spot. Not only that, none of the players would have played. Coaches would have boycotted. It would have been a totally different reaction. But because it was us, you had Charles Barkley talking about maybe he should be suspended for one full year. You had another brother uh, who's one of the commentators, elder brother, former coach of the Jets, whose name is escaping me. He's on ESPN talking about how uh, what he did was wrong, you know, but at the same time, this is a business, and you don't have to like the person you play for and the person who you play for has a right to be a racist, even though it's not right. And I've seen athlete after athlete after athlete making excuses, black athletes paving the way for this man to receive some sort of compassionate retribution from the black community. And then we have the president of that Los Angeles NAACP had the audacity to say that the NAACP stands in support of Sterling because he has done so much for black children in California 
all types of scholarships and money he's given the NAACP and that they're willing to work with him and have a conversation with him. And most importantly, they said, which I thought was absolutely ridiculous to come out of the mouth of the president of the NAACP, they said, quote, we don't think his comments reflected his true feelings about black people. Now, I'm a psychologist, and one thing I know about the mind is it doesn't come out the mouth if it's not in the mind. More importantly, things that are said in a confidential setting, as did exist when Sterling made those comments to his girlfriend, things that we say in private are infinitely more true as it relates to what we really feel than things said in public because things said in public is often said to protect one's image, reputation, and ego. So for the NAACP to allude that this man's private conversations with his girlfriend that he did not know were being taped was not indicative of what he really thinks about black people because he gave out scholarships, I thought that was ridiculous. That's like saying John D. Rockefeller cares about black people because he built Spelman University and named Spelman University after his white wife. And even though family raised the money for the manufacturing of the HIV AIDS vaccine virus, okay, that and because this man is a population and was a population control junkie and helped to colonialize and neocolonialize Africa, even though he made AIDS and did all this other stuff to African people, because he opened up a black college for black girls in Atlanta, that means that his uh, different actions against black people weren't really indicative of his true heart because, after all, he gave us a college. Do we not know that white military science is based upon confusing one's victim, confusing one's enemy? There's not a rich white racist on the face of the earth who has never given money to black people. All rich white racists have given money to black people. Donald Trump, Bill Gates, and the list goes on. Even George Bush has given money to black organizations in Texas. So that doesn't mean nothing. That's part of the strategy. In fact, the Rockefellers invented, the Rockefellers invented the 501c3 not-for-profit corporation. That is a Rockefeller invention created to do what? Finance the very people you are trying to exterminate. Finance the very people you are trying to exterminate because their researchers found that if you finance the victim, in other words, if you give them a more comfortable existence under oppression, you're not changing the oppression. You're simply giving, this, giving them a more comfortable existence under the oppression. If you do that, they will be less likely to fight back at your oppression, and the leaders of those groups, the ones in whom hands you place your 501c3 money, the leaders will be more likely to control the criticism that you receive from the masses of the people. And forcing him to sell the team, that doesn't mean nothing. He's a rich white man. Selling the team to white people simply means what? taking the business out of your name and putting it into someone else's name. White people do it all the time. They do it all the time. White people regularly take their homes yeah, and put it in the names. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They put it in the names of who? They're elderly. Why? Because in many states, if the elderly die, being the owner of a, the mortgage remaining, the balance remaining on that property can be written off. So are we to think that this was some type of victory for black people? I'll tell you what would have been the victory if the Clippers players said, we not playing. If they would have shut down the playoffs, do you know how much money the city of Los Angeles would have lost? The state of California would have lost? Do you know how much money ESPN, TNT, TBS, ABC? Do you know how much endorsements would have been lost just by them boycotting the rest of the playoffs? Even though the other games are going on, that would have thrown a serious wrench 
and the capitalistic machine of the white racist NBA. That would have been revolutionary. That's what should have happened. All of the black uh, NBA executives and coaches should have said, guess what, we're walking off the job until this man is gone. And even if the NBA would have fired him within a day, guess what? They would have still lost billions of dollars even if only one night of play, even if only one night of play was forfeited, they would have definitely felt that in their pocket. Remember, white folks are only bothered by three things, money, blood, and large numbers of organized people. Money, blood, and large numbers of organized people. And obviously, with the black community being as disorganized as it was at the time this happened, we wasn't able to mobilize any serious type of reaction to what took place. We don't control any militia, so that only leaves hitting them in their pocket with the money. The players and the athletes together, what if all the black athletes, retired and current, would have came together and said, guess what, we're not commentating, we're not speaking, we're not going to the games, we not playing, that would have shook up the financial base of the NBA. That would have been financial revolution. But because they loved their job and because they loved the white man, none of them even thought that way. 